it sucks. I haven't left the house. Yeah. I actually, my mom, uh, I asked my mom yesterday, I was like, do you want to go grocery shopping? Because <laughs> that, that's what I want. Like, I just need out of the house. Yeah. So we went grocery shopping today. Yeah. And I, uh, I bought some tapioca. Um, Ooh, so starch. exciting. So that I can make bubble tea. <laughs> oh, that's where your life has gone. Welcome. You are entering into a strange dimension. A dimension where narratives from across space and time come together. Narratives that could have, might have, or should have been all exist here in one space. This is Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline. Welcome back to Cinemasters. This is the show where we watch movies and TV shows or whatever, maybe video games soon ish and then we uh pitch them back to one another my name is Dejangles the strange or andrew and i'm joined by Alyssa today hello and today we are talking about the cartoon 2008 animated movie not from disney called the tale of despero yes and what did you think of the tale of despero this one was kind of in like the media it was just like warm it was good but it wasn't bad. <laughs> but it wasn't great. <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't bad. Like, yeah, I actually, I saw this movie in theaters in 2008. Oh, jealous. Big burden? Jealous. I didn't. <laughs> yeah, it looked good on the big screen. Um, I I like this movie. It's nice to see an animated movie that isn't by Disney. Yes. Be- as much as I love Disney movies, it's nice to see an animated movie that's not by Disney. Okay, the tra- I'm going to go on a rant for a second. The trailer for Rayla and the Last Dragon. Rayla? Ray- Raya? I don't know, but yeah. And whatever. Um, Ray- I'm going to look it up right now. So, to talk I'm for a like second. Ray- I got to look it up. Raylin? Ray- I don't know. Uh, I just I said Rayla because it's the first name that came to my mind that started with an R. Raya or Raya. Raya. Uh, uh, but Rayla is from a Dragon Prince. Raya and the Last yes. uh, Dragon Dropped. And it's clearly like, super influenced by like uh, Asian culture and I realize like that's a large group and I'm overly simplifying a large demographic there but I also felt a little bit worried when I saw it because I was like is this just another like pandering attempt by Disney to try and get in with the Disney market do you know or with the Chinese market like yeah I'm I'm wondering I am for diversity for even just for the sake of diversity like let's have more representation of people from all over the world Simply because we should. I'm for that. But if you're pandering to Disney or to China as like a means of of making money or particularly because the government in China is not a super great place, not a super great mm-hmm. field of people, I have a lot of problems with that. So, yeah. no, like don't, maybe don't I'm, do that. I'm sitting here wondering if I should watch it or not for that same reason. But you know me, like I love anything with dragons in it. Yeah, but like I didn't. I was super against watching Mulan in general. I still haven't watched it, I, and I, I don't think I will. As soon as the actress, what's her face, came out, she was in favor of like policing in Hong Kong, and like yeah. I was like, no, no, I can't do that. Not- I have friends who live in Hong Kong. I, I, no. Yeah. So it's just not good. Yeah, it's not a good place. Not a good idea. It's not good. Uh, but enough Anyways. about that. Back to Taylor Swift. <laughs> I needed to say something about that. It was building up in me. I need so. Uh, this was a fun movie and it had a lot of big names in it. Like Kevin Klein, Dustin Hoffman, Christopher Lloyd, uh, William, Emma Watson, or William H. Macy, Emma Watson, Sigourney Weaver is the, is the narrator. Like, holy man, a lot of big names. And I came away from watching this movie, even the first time going, eh, it's fun. Yeah. It's okay. I, uh, I've watched this movie probably like six or seven times in my life. Wow. And I don't know why. <laughs> okay. Like just through. But because it, it's for the same reason. I like it. It's, it's cute. It's a, it's kind of like a feel good movie, but it's also, there's not really anything special about it. Yeah. The, the rat, the evil rat reminds me of the, the critic. What's his name from Ratatouille? Yes. Yeah, just yeah. a random just looks side very note. very similar that way. Yeah. Yeah. But. I I mean I liked it, but it wasn't it wasn't all that special. No, there's nothing special about this movie, which is really frustrating because one of the things that I think I'm gonna say it, this movie should have been a series. No, it should have been a video game. 
Oh, okay. I know, right? I'm switching it up. No, this one should have been a video game. When I was watching it, I was like, how cool would it be to explore like Mouse World and Rat World? The way that those worlds look visually is very different. Or like Human World. And then also like, it's all about like knights and honor and everything. And I'm like, what if you gave Despero, like this mouse, and you played as him, gave him his little like sewing pin sword? Mm -hmm. Like his little sewing needle sword. And then you like went out into the world like exploring. You yeah. know what I mean? And got to go to these different parts of the kingdoms, like Rat Kingdom and and Mouse Kingdom. And of course, I would add some because you need a bigger world than that. But like, that would be such a fun game to play. And the mechanics are all there. Like, it already has sword fighting. The world already has like, it's like, it's kind of monsters the way like he fights the cat in the Colosseum. Like, that could easily be a whole set piece. And then like, I don't know, like fighting other animals or like having other animals have their own kingdoms. or And the fact but that also, like... like- the trying to like maneuver around like when he had the 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 locket and was trying to go up the yeah that could easily just be like oh now he has a grappling hook yeah like you know what i mean like that's just another i could see the video game mechanics right there and the world building and i was like this would be a fun super well animated game in a very legend of zelda kind of way I actually have a Ratatouille game as well, oh, and no. it's basically the same thing where you're running around as a as a as rat a and exploring yeah. and trying to pick up cheese and making food, and it's it's fun. But I think that it would actually be really cool to play as Despero in the same like, kind of format. And, and have it, but have it be more like instead of just running around making food, have it play like a Legend of Zelda game or like this adventure kind of platformer. Dark Souls Despero. Yeah, Dark Souls Despero. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, so like I saw this and was like I love the world building I love the um, borrowers aesthetic of the mo- the mouse world and the and the rat world I love that mm-hmm. it's so cute and it's just so charming just to see things like mm-hmm. repurposed like the fact that they all wear buttons but the buttons are like two sizes too big for them <laughs> like it's I don't know man that's just super charming. And the fact that they also used large buttons as like gates to go into yeah. their like yards, and then yeah. the books turned into the school. Oh yeah, it was really cute it's too. So, like, oh, and the coin is like where they have like a pedestal that they like. Oh, it's so charming! Like I'm a sucker for that. I love the borrowers. I love the uh, a, the cute. secret world of Arietti. Yeah, um, yeah, it's so charming. Um, yeah, I also did want to say that. Um, the the school that the mice go to is basically the same school that Justin, our drummer, went to. Learn how to be yeah, afraid. Yeah, you have to be scared of everything. You have to be scared of everything. He learned how yeah. to be afraid. So yep. if he's watching or listening to this, like that one's for you, bud. Cause... Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you need to learn how to scurry. Yeah. I really did like this movie's... Um, concept of like negative feedback loops in terms of, in terms of prejudice. Mm-hmm. Like the way Roscuro, the rat, goes to the princess, tries to apologize, and her prejudice of him then affects the way he feels about her. Like this whole mm-hmm. feedback loop into hate and, and fear. I really like that. I tried to do more with that on my pitch. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I I did enjoy my time with this movie. My biggest problem with this movie is that it feels slow. It moves. I actually didn't feel that at all. Oh, this movie moves way too slowly for me. The, the so plot's there, we were... but it, it all feels like I'm like, where's the forward movement? Yeah. So we were talking about in Suicide Squad, we were saying that there's too many characters. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of characters in this one as yes. well, but they each have their own time, which I really like, and they all have something to contribute to the plot. Yeah, I get that, that it's basically supposed to be trying to like build one cohesive narrative about the kingdom through all these different characters. Mm-hmm. And I feel like it it like having each of the worlds having each of the worlds done having each of the worlds sorry, I lost my train of thought there. Let me think. <laughs> having each of the worlds like the mice kingdom, the rat kingdom and the um and the human kingdom, like all of have them all connected a bit more. And then so each of the characters like all affect one another and the motives and movements that each kingdom does affects one another. And that's kind of there. But but really, my problem is, is I don't I mean, I know Despero is supposed to be the main character, but I re- sometimes felt like why introduce 
Despero as your main, or why have Despero as your main character, but introduce Roskiro first? Well, he was kind of the inciting incident. I get that, but like he's yeah. not the main character. He's an important character because otherwise, to but me, it feels yeah. like should if Roskiro is the main character, then we should follow him and not Despero. But I also feel like I think the way that they framed it was, it was supposed to be that that happened on the same day that. Or short, or like right before Despero was born. So they're setting it up to yeah, be like, well, now me... this hero, or who is going to be a hero, has been born because we see the chef sitting there flicking the coin, and that's when. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I often feel like this movie plays with time really weirdly. It is a little strange because I'm all I'm <laughs> like, okay, like how many years has it been since Despero was born? How old is Despero? Because Matthew Matthew Broderick, who plays Despero has a very deeper voice. And I was like, is Despero supposed to be young? Like, how old is this guy? <laughs> he doesn't true. sound very young. It, it's weird. That's true. Um, I did like the Threadmaster. That's a dope name. I wish my name was the Threadmaster. I could be the Threadmaster. You could be the Threadmaster. Uh, I also love that when he ties um, a the, the thread around Despero to go down into the deep, dark tunnel, it's a red thread because... Like the red thing of destiny as a whole thing. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. I, I there were some things that I really did like. My whole thing, I think, I think this movie for me has like a lack of inertia. Like it doesn't move forward at quite the right pace. And I think it's mm-hmm. because the story is all there. It's just told out of order. Yeah, that's me anyway. So yeah, so I little. like this movie. It was mostly just nitpicks for me. It's an enjoyable experience. It's not never going to be the greatest movie, but it was good. I. You know, the one thing that I really had to say, we've talked, well, we just talked about this recently, was I I love soup, okay? <laughs> like, soup is one of my favorite yes. foods, but you I don't think it makes the- You did actually pull that up yesterday, I think. Yeah. yeah, and the thing is, is that I don't think soup makes the world go round, and they really made it look <laughs> like soup makes the world go round in this movie, yeah. and I was like, that- you know, I love soup, but not that much. But see, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's this whole, like, chef with his vegetable man story- yeah, and, and the, it doesn't those two really characters go don't really do anything for the overall plot. Yeah, they're, they're sort of there. They meet Despero at one point in time, but like, it feels like there's too many moving parts. I also felt like the princess and the jailkeeper, or like the the maid and the jailkeeper, were kind of that was also poorly done. Like it's too tangential. Yeah, there could have been a a little bit more there. But I I understand why her character was there, less so him. Uh, but even her um, character, I was like, yeah. this is, it works, but it's also not really necessary. Yeah. Anyway, and your goods and bads. Uh, well, we covered most of mine. The only other thing that I really had to talk about was the art. Um, it was amazing for like the fur, like Despero's ears looked so soft. I wanted to just like reach out <laughs> into the screen and touch them. I was like, maybe I should just go and visit Ruby and give her a little pat because that's how soft it looked. Yeah. And then same thing with like Rascaro's, um for he looked a little mangy like it was really well done but you thought but the then, texture was really good yeah yeah but then the people their like art was wooden. just yeah, very strange <laughs> yeah we've come a long way in terms of 3d uh animation um they did look a and little I, strange uh some of them uh, the princess to me looked like she belonged in a tim burton film yes that's exactly what I was going to say. And yeah. I, I understand that a lot of the focus was supposed to be on the animal characters, but it doesn't mean you can just neglect the artwork for the others. I yeah, they know, did look a little strange, strange, a little wooden. Yeah. And their their animation was pr- fairly fluid, though. Yeah. Like, they never looked robotical. No, it was just the art style yeah. for them that really bothered me. Yeah. And, yeah, yeah. and the soup thing. But- the soup thing. <laughs> like, I love soup, guys, but come on. <laughs> Yeah, well, soup is literally like like a homemade turkey and noodle and vegetable soup. I could eat that every day. That's weird. I love it. You, you... <laughs> but I don't love it enough to think the world like revolves around soup. My um, what about you? Get along with one of my best friends from Austria. Mm-hmm. Like that's just the kind of person she is. I'm like, what's your comfort food when things are going poorly? And she goes, soup. Yeah. Like, I'm like, okay, but like, you know, you don't want like ice cream or she's like, no, soup. soup. So weird. <laughs> Always. Yeah. Um, yeah. 
yeah, I guess that's really all I have to say in terms of like, those were your, what were your goods then? Well, my goods, um, were, I liked the voice actors. Yep. A lot of famous people. Um, I liked the, the art for the animals and, oh, and then I said, I liked the narrator actually like her voice really fit the narration. It's Sigourney Weaver. Telling. Yeah. Like it was, it was really crisp. And I actually really liked the kind of classic storybook theme throughout it where it's like knights and chivalry. Yeah, I did. I really liked that as well. I think they could have leaned into that a bit more. I kind of wish they did. And then um, I same thing as you, the distinct like mouse world and rat world. (laughs) It was just really cool to have have it so distinct and so like well done what is the word (laughs) well done sure yeah um here is a question for you that is that that is sort of tangential but also related which is so they made a declaration a decree if you will that there would be no more soup in the kingdom Mm -hmm. which is weird to me like why would you the rat thing i get but the soup thing that's weird so here's where i go how do you define this is a classic question of ontology how do you define soup because how do they feel about stews that's, you know, I don't know if I want to get into this. <laughs> Here's a better question for you. How do they feel about s- breakfast cereal? So, to me, soup is anything that's hot and liquidy. Okay, but what about gazpacho? Gazpacho is just tomato soup served cold, sort of. Which is just sacrilegious to me. <laughs> so you wouldn't um, even think gazpacho is soup? No, which means that cereal is not soup unless it's made with hot milk. But, yeah, but, but what if you do? What if you just really pour gross? yourself a bowl of Fruit Loops and then microwave <laughs> the milk and pour it on? Would that be soup? Gross. <laughs> oh, you know, I want to try that now. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I would do hot milk, but not with Fruit Loops. No. I might do oh, it with, with like, like Reese's Puffs. Yeah, or like Reese's, like 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 yeah. uh, mini wheats or like Reese's uh, the the Rice Krispies. I don't know about mini wheats. I don't know how I feel about like warm wheat. Yeah, warm things. wheat. That's classic. Warm like mini wheats or warm rice know. krispies. Um I might do yeah, maybe. I might do warm um warm frosted flakes or warm corn flakes. I could see that, but I definitely wouldn't yeah. do warm fruit loops. <laughs> no. <laughs> It'd be just kind of gross. Soggy gross warm <laughs> loops. <laughs> I'm going to, you know, I've got Reese's Puffs downstairs. I'm going to do that. As an experiment. <laughs> I'm going to have a bowl of warm Reese's Puff cereal <laughs> today. Anyway, that was, I was just uh, curious to see, like, like, where do you think they would stand with other kinds of, like, what constitutes a soup? I'd love to see a bill that was just like, all soups are illegal. Anything that is a warm, hot beverage cooked in a broth. It's like, how would you define that? <laughs> what if I put my soup in a mug? And drank it. Then I'm just drinking chunky tea. <laughs> Please don't ever say the word <laughs> chunky tea <laughs> to me ever again. <laughs> I mean, that's basically what bubble tea is. <laughs> hot, hot cereal. Hot cereal, I can deal with. Just hearing the words chunky tea <laughs> makes me want to But it's puke. also like a chunky like vegetable tea yeah it's not like like because i know what you're saying about bubble tea that's just chunky tea but it's tapioca like we're talking about a chunky vegetable like do i want carrots floating in my earl gray no thank you oh my god you <laughs> okay wow <laughs> mm, delicious chunky tea uh i will oh. never ever not be able to hear that or see that it's a good thing i don't like tea I yeah, I love tea and now I'm just a little worried. <laughs> yeah. So you had mentioned that you thought there were too many uh, characters uh, that but they each had like enough time. I felt like that things were a little disconnected because there was too many characters. Okay. Not that they weren't all connected, but like I I it was harder for me to care about each of them. Like Despero yeah. I cared about and but and I will say, I think they do a great job with, with Roscuro at the beginning, making you care about him. Like, the way he gets treated and, like, the way it's all just a misunderstanding. Oh, I always feel so sad during that part. Every time I watch yeah. this movie, I'm like, oh, but it's... He's just And so And how sad. the whole time he's apologizing. Yeah. He's like, and it's not what you think listen. it is. I'm sorry. Like, you know, yeah. don't hurt me. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It just makes me feel so bad. Oh, it's so good. 
So also the one of the things d- the princess doesn't seem surprised when she meets the mouse. Same with the chef. Yeah, they don't seem surprised. They're like, oh, it's a little mouse. But then the mouse talks, and nobody's like, oh, shit. Talking. Animals can talk. Apparently, animals can talk in this world, and that's not revelatory. But only mouse and rats. Or mice and rats. Well, we don't know. The cat might be able to talk. Because the dogs and the cats didn't talk. We don't know. The cat might be able to talk. The the cat's a prisoner, which means maybe it doesn't have the, the, the... ability to speak because prisoners sometimes true if they've, it's been captive its whole life it might have been treated like an animal like a, a feral animal i don't know like this raises but a the- whole bunch of questions like you'll also note like notice that the soup that they served was vegetarian yep so i wonder actually if the in this world like animals are are sentient Maybe. and they're therefore treated like with respect and so that brings a whole new level on top of this idea i'm reading way into this but that brings a whole new yep. level <laughs> To this idea about like when they banish all the rats or rats are, are like set to be killed like that's almost like more of a genocidal act of law as opposed oh. to just a that's like super ex- dark right oh my like, god but it all depends it all depends on how this kingdom or world universe whatever views uh animal sentience and whether or not they have sentience is it only despero and roscuro that can talk to humans that understand because that's never really explained and of course again i'm reading super deep into this but i wonder because the soup was vegetarian we never saw any animal go into the soup or any kind of meat go into the soup that i can recall off the top of my head Mm -hmm. but um but then why did they have the pigs mm, because maybe they can talk remember she always felt like she liked the pigs so we never never Maybe she could talk to the pigs. Maybe they could talk. Maybe the pigs could talk. It was never... It was sort of glossed over. Yeah. But they were kind of sold to me with the intention of being food. (laughs) Yeah, but she was also sold to the castle. That's true. So, I don't know. Like, I'm just saying, like, sometimes when you bring in, like, anthropomorphized animals, you bring in a, a degree of ambiguity as to which animals are anthropomorphized and which animals are not. But mm-hmm. it makes me think the fact that the soup was vegetarian and the fact that no character is surprised when the rat uh, or the talks. mouse talks, it, yeah. except the narrator at the beginning says, we all know that rats can't talk. And then, I don't know, the fact that nobody's surprised by this, by a talking rat or a talking mouse, or even when Ross Grow tries to apologize like he's like, no, 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 I'm sorry, I'm super sorry. It was just a misunderstanding. Nobody in that whole sequence at the beginning stops and goes, "Holy shit, this rat can talk and clearly mm-hmm. has some some semblance of like logic or reason." Maybe we should stop and mm-hmm. listen to him. Instead, they're all just like, "Oh my god, he was in the soup!" And yeah, I don't know. I, that's why I say, like, I think this brings another layer to this decree. Like, this is almost a a cultural genocide. Like, let's push rat people on because that brings a whole new degree of as you said darkness but a whole new like dimension to their kind of like underground kingdom they are literally mm-hmm. oppressed by this yeah. monarchy wow yeah and this is how i my never brain even works. thought of that so this oh is my how my God. brain works <laughs> <laughs> i didn't do anything like that with my pitch but i did think it was interesting that is very interesting just something to chew on mm-hmm. in your chunky tea Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> you did this. Uh, I know I did. Do you want to go into your pitch first or do you want me to? I, uh... Well, first of all, how... Yeah, on a scale of, uh, like, how proud of you are, of you are, how proud of this pitch are you? You know, I think it's something I've never tried before. Okay. So I think I'm pretty proud of myself for trying this. Okay. But I'm also just, like, I don't know how well it works. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> uh, so. I think mine's pretty good, but... Up to you. I, I think I'd rather go first. Okay, though. you go first then. Okay. So my pitch was to gender swap or to like do a role reversal for three of the characters. Yeah. Um, this is a, that's a classic be... Cinemasters move, by the way. Okay, good. Which would be um, the royalty. Okay. And Despero. Okay. So all the royalty are gender swapped. Yeah. So instead of the queen passing away, it would be the king. Yep. Um, and instead of there being a princess, it's a prince. Yeah. And then Despero, I don't know, Despero still sounds like a good female name, yeah. so whatever. I'm going to get another chinchilla and I'm going to name it Despero. Tight. And she's going to be cute. Okay. Um, and so my question was basically like, how would their interactions change? And how would that change for Despero in, in her 
learning of the knights and the chivalry and honor and whatever. Yeah, that's How would that change for her? Yeah. <clears throat> so, um, in the beginning, not a whole lot would change. I would still have the same setup. Um, same thing happens with Rescuro falling into the soup, except it's the king who dies and um, all of that crazy stuff. And uh, it's the queen and the prince who are left mourning. So... Then we get to Despero. I folded my book in half and that was not a good idea. Okay, so then we get to <laughs> Despero, um, who's born. She's cute, um, doesn't really fit in. And I think that this would be a good time to like be like, oh, she doesn't fit in with anyone, not just like with the girl mice, but also the boy mice. And she just doesn't, she doesn't fit in. She's weird. Um, but she still does all those crazy things like jumping on the mouse traps and stuff like that. Um, so still the same kind of setup there as well. Um, so just a fast forward through to where Despero starts reading. She starts looking at her situation and going, well, you know, maybe I don't like the situation am I, I'm in. Do I have longing for something else? Am I like this princess? Um, and then she kind of comes to the conclusion that like, oh, I need a knight to take me away from this like super, I want to, I want to call it oppressive, but it's yeah. not really oppressive. I think like, it's actually, mice... I think it would actually be fairly oppressive. Yes. Cause you know, she doesn't fit in. So everyone's always telling her like, you need to like be scared of everything. You need to be very cautious. You need to scurry. And she's like, I need someone to take me away from this because I don't like it. Um, so then she finds the prince and she's like, oh, he could be my knight. Um, and then she actually finds herself surprised that he doesn't want to save her from the the other mice. In fact, he doesn't really care about the situation at all. He's... Um, what a dick. He's more trying to deal with his own boring life as mm -hmm. everything has become dark and gray and soupless um <laughs> <laughs> and so then she's like okay well you know maybe he just needs a little bit of cheering up and then he'll he'll take me away um from from the boring mice world so she's wondering if there's something that she can do for him um looking for guidance she goes back to the library um and continues reading to see maybe this book has more answers because you know clearly it has all the answers to begin with <laughs> Um, so eventually after continuing to read and sneak away to read, um, her family is like, well, we don't know what to do with her. Like, she's just, she's not a menace, but she's a danger to, to the society. And eventually she gets caught by the mayor and is sentenced, sentenced, sentenced <laughs> to go down to the rats. Um, I also forgot to mention it, but I really think that it would be cool if she had met the Threadmaster earlier. Yeah, he seems like a cool character. He's super cool. Like, maybe she just goes to, like, be like, hey, what are you up to today? And they're and all, like, everyone else is, like, afraid of him. He shouldn't be here. Yeah. Like, yeah. And everyone else um, is afraid of him, but he's, like, super dope. Just, like, a chill dude. Just, yeah. like, he's got pieces of wisdom where he's like hey he's you're courageous like, that's cool oh hey despero what's going on brah except <laughs> oh, it turns God. out he's a surf. no no i'm just joking <laughs> um but yeah so you know she gets sent down same sort of, like i'm i'm really following a lot of the same plot line that happened um up until she meets riskiro so she meets the guard tells him that she's looking for a knight who can help her prince maybe or that she is trying to help her prince realize that he needs to be a knight or something like yeah, that. Yeah, and yeah. he's just like, well, I don't want to hear your story because, eh, right? <laughs> you know, <laughs> just that that selfish kind of, well, why does he get to be happy? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sort of thing that we saw earlier um, from him. And then, um, so she gets thrown to the rats. She tries fighting them off, but, you know doesn't work she gets thrown into the arena with the cat um so the same thing happens Rescuro wants to take her and um asks her how the story goes 
we get the cute little montage where she's like, yeah, I'm looking for a knight who's brave and chivalrous. I keep saying chivalrous, but I don't actually think they say that in the movie. Uh, what is it? Truth, honor, and, and justice. Justice, yeah. Like, but it's the code of chivalry. Like the code of chivalry. Yeah. Um, and then Despero is sitting there going, oh, maybe this guy is, you know, he's like a knight of the rat world, right? I don't know. Kay. She's like just got this like rose colored glasses on where everyone she meets is now a knight if they are slightly different from everyone else she meets um or if they seem a lot kinder um so yeah so then later we see the servant girl um whose name i'm forgetting um magri something like that something like magri meg We'll call her Meg. Sure. Because I think she actually does get called Meg towards the end. Um, Has been trying to charm the prince. Oh. Because she wants to be a princess. And the only way for her to become a princess is to She's trying to get his pee in that V. Oh, my God. And uh, <clears throat> anyways, <laughs> so she's been trying to, like, charm him. And finally, after being rejected so many times... She's pretty easy to manipulate by Roscuro. Mm. So after Roscuro tries to go and um, apologize to the prince and gets chased out, he finds Meg and he's just like, oh, this'll this'll work. Maybe she can help me kind of exact my revenge because he wouldn't even listen. Yeah. He's not even willing to listen, let alone forgive, right? So maybe it's him. It's it's the prince that's wrong. Um. So the prince gets locked in dungeon by Meg. Same thing happens to Meg, I guess. Whatever. I'm not too worried about that part of the plot. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, the and Despero finds him, and she's just like, I thought, you know, that Roscuro was gonna be a good way to help cheer you up i'm sorry that it didn't turn out that way and he's just like it's fine just go get my go get the queen here's my pendant uh, charm seal necklace which is his ring like his you know the signet that use. It's signet thank you um and then despero just like puts it on like a little belt and runs around oh that's adorable i had it like in my mind i was like this is the cutest thing ever um and then she finds the queen who is actually turning down suitors because i don't know for me that's just exactly what happens when a king dies um and i mean not that she really needs any suitors because she has the prince who is next in line um but i guess maybe that's just what's expected of her because women yeah that's that's kind of where i was thinking yeah. i was like i mean she has the next of kin like she has the one that's next in line but also it's just kind of how things work i guess um and then she hears the mouse but thinking it's just a maid she turns despero away um because after dealing with all the, all the suitors she's just like i just want peace and quiet just leave me alone mm. i don't care about anything else that's going on right now um and so we get to see her mourning um again and then um, Despero tries to go meet with her family, who thinks she's dead. I loved that scene; it was hilarious, it was pretty especially good. in the with the bell. Like that was great. I I was sitting there smiling at it. Like it was just funny. It's pretty good. Um, and then she meets the chef and the vegetable dude. Does the vegetable dude have a name? I think so. I I don't yeah, know what I don't it is, know, but. I'm just going to call him the vegetable dude. Yeah. Um, cause that's just, that's just the name I have in my head. Um, and so she's like, okay, hey, we need someone to help the prince because the queen won't listen. She just, she just doesn't want to listen to anyone. Yeah. Um, and so maybe, you know, the prince, we you know, we just need to find someone who can help the prince, even if the queen won't. Um, so she shows them, the ring and they're like oh my god it's true um so they go running around trying to find their way down to the dungeon but by the time they get there they realize the prince is not there anymore um 
And so Despero is like, okay, well, I'm going to go, let's go check the rat world. Um, and so she goes into the rat world, but they can't actually find their way in. Um, there must have been like a different door that they took the prince through. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just <laughs> just trying to find a way for that yeah. plot hole to be filled in. Um, and so she starts panicking because she's like, you know, I'm I'm just a little mouse. I don't know how I can help against these rats. I don't know how I can help against like, I, you know, he's he's the prince. He should be the one doing all this stuff. And then um, the chef is like, well, no. You go in, see if there's anything you can do, um, and we'll try. We'll keep trying to find a way in. We'll f- we'll try to find something like some way to help from out here. And so she goes in, and uh, where was I? Yeah, she's like, or the ch- the chef is like, why don't you step in? Because I think you'd make a good night because you seem to really care mm. about doing the right thing. And so she's just like, it's like a moment of realization. Like, I can be my own night. Yeah. 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 And so she goes in. The same kind of fight scene plays out where um, she lets the cat out. The cat scares all the mice away. The big. um, You mean the rats? The rats. Yes. Sorry. And then um, Rescuro comes in and he's just like, I'm sorry. I didn't, you know, I didn't want this to happen this way. I'm, I'm feeling really horrible. I just. I was just really mad, you know? And so in the moment that the prince forgives Roscuro mm-hmm. is when the sky starts to clear up yeah. and the sunshine starts coming back because it's like, And the like, soup oh, starts getting boiled. No, <laughs> not yet. <laughs> and uh, so... Uh, da, 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 da. So then at around the same time that they're really fighting hard to save the prince the chef finds like a window or something and that's where the light comes in because i was i was like oh we don't have the locket anymore now how am i supposed to right um so that scares the the rats away for good and then he's actually able to come in and help get the prince free um so then you know just Despero is all like, haha, I am my own knight now. And then she's just like this this crazy little mouse. She's so cute. Um, in your head. Where you imagine her. Like she's adorable in my head. <laughs> yeah, I wish man, that I, I could draw because I would draw her. So after that's dealt with, the sky is cleared up, it's rained, there's food, the fields are growing. The queen is starting to feel a lot better. She's like, okay, well maybe everything will get better. You know, I miss my husband, but life goes on we can't just condemn an entire species just because a sentient species i might add yes because one rat just happened to be in the wrong place at the wrong time and the chef is like hey so about that soup (laughs) (laughs) soup (laughs) makes the world go round yes um and so you know she's like you know what make me a little bowl of soup we'll see how it makes me feel and then she has her soup everything gets better <laughs> comfort food right and then she is just it's just a huge improvement but soup is not the thing that clears the sky just you know saying that so in the end i wanted it to be a way or i wanted to find a way that all of the worlds like the human world, the, the rat, rat world, world, and the mouse, mouse world. world would be a little bit more connected. Yeah. And so I wanted to have it so that maybe the mouse world and the rat world started trading a little bit, some of their found goodies, and that the chef comes and gives them scraps or extras yeah. that he might have. So maybe he like will have extra like, I don't know, vegetables or something. Yeah. So he gives half to the mice and half to the rats so that the rats don't have to scavenge as yeah. much or fight as hard for their food because maybe that'll make things better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I really wanted to end it on a scene where Despero gets to read a book about a young mouse 
who becomes her own knight. Yeah. I really I and, really like know, the maybe, idea. Maybe the prince is the one that gives it to her. Yeah. It's just like, here, it's a smaller book. I couldn't get it any smaller in mouse size, <laughs> oh, but it's adorable. something yeah. that's that's for you. I really like the idea of like when you change the the genders of certain characters, how that affects like chivalry and whatnot, and how that affects mm-hmm. like how they move through the story. I think that's a really, really good idea. I also think you didn't actually need to change that much except for their genders to keep the story and just get a different, an, a very different feeling out of it. It's really good. Yeah. yeah. Because now instead of it just being like knights and honor and chivalry, it's like, I can I can fix this because, you know, I don't need someone else to come in and, and save yeah. me. I, and right? I like at the beginning, she thinks like, I oh I'm the I'm like the princess I need to find a knight and at the end she's like no 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 I really I'm like the that knight. It, it, it it's it's a simple story but like that kind of revelatory experience for for like a female character is quite good yes it's quite good approved awesome like I'm glad because I was really nervous I was sitting here going I don't know if I played this out right nope. but I hope I, I did. think you did um. And uh, I think out of all of the pitches you've done for Cinemasters so far, that might be my favorite you've done. I think it's one of my favorites too, because most of the time one. I'm like, it just needs to be a series. It just needs to be <laughs> longer. Yep. They need to put more world building in. But I felt like there was enough world building in this. Yeah, there's the, and, and what I think, what I really like is that you like grabbed a theme and were like, oh, okay, we can work with this. Yeah. Yeah, that was really good. Really good. That's my favorite of yours so far. Top okay, I'm score, glad. Top score. I'm going to get into mine if that's okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So in my version, the only, the biggest difference is that I think that we need to fix, fix, or pick one character that the audience can follow to keep momentum throughout. So the idea behind mm-hmm. mine was to keep the story fairly similar and maybe explore a few thematic ideas, but actually rearrange the order of events and how okay. they're told. So in the beginning, we do get a narrator telling us that there's a kingdom, three kingdoms, where there's no rain and it's always cloudy, but it didn't always used to be this way. And there's these three kingdoms. So we start off in the mice kingdom, where they, um, the mice are like, they weren't really affected by the, the incident, otherwise, other than the fact that they noticed the lack of rain, the lack of sunlight, and they also notice that food is less tasty and that there is less of it. And so mm-hmm. they have they have slowly become like, insular like they're like oh that since this has happened like we need to be very very careful we need to make sure that we're insular we don't you know there are rules that we use to stay alive so here we get despero's introduction um and uh like when he was born and then he grows up in this kingdom and it's ruled by fear by all these laws and the people are like suspicious and quick to distrust if you like break the laws and they're like they like for lack of a better word rat each other out when there's when the laws are (laughs) are broken and stuff because they think these laws are this like dictation will keep them safe. So it's like a city, a, a world ruled by fear, the mouse world. Yeah. Um, so when Despero doesn't seem to fit in as he grows up, he's taken by his brother to the library where instead of eating the book, he reads it. And for the next t- couple days, he keeps going back to the library where he reads where one day in the library, he hears crying and he goes to find a princess and the same scene plays out. And she's, he's like, Oh my goodness, you're the princess. Like what's, what's going on? Why are you so upset? She's genuinely impressed with him. And she's like, it's like, I'm sad because something awful happened to our king, right? He always, he's always sad. He never spends time with anyone, including me. And the people in the kingdom live in fear because there, there's no laws to protect them, right? Mm-hmm. There's no one there to like protect them. They, people just do what they want. They, they've lost laws. And Despero's like, well, ha- having no rules can be, would be great. Like I live in a world where there's only rules. And she's like, well, I mean, our rules, like anyone can do whatever they want. There, there's no one there's nothing there to protect them because the king has lost interest he's and despero was like whoa that's crazy um like i'm a knight i believe in like the code and whatnot and i will help the king um so despero misinterprets what the princess is saying he thinks mm-hmm. that because he's young I, I imagine him like much younger in his personality he thinks that the king has been cursed by magic Okay. Right. He thinks that this like some kind of like melancholic spell has been cast on the king to make him not care. And so he starts, he's like, I'm going to find out what goes, what's going on. But the king can't hear him because he's playing his instrument and he's too far away. And Despero's like, ah, he must be cursed so that he can't hear me. 
And so he decides he's going to return home. And the whole place is panicked because he's been missing. They basically thought he was dead. And he like shows up and they're all like, where were you? And he was like, yeah, I was talking with a princess. And they're all like, you spoke to a human? So they banish him and he gets stuck down the hole the same way he was before. Um, but he's like, well, that's cool. I only came back to get ready because I was going to go on this quest anyway. So I was already leaving. So <laughs> bye. And he goes down the hole anyway. So here down the hole, Despero finds this rat kingdom, which is ruled by one rat who forces his subjects into fear by controlling the food. Mm-hmm. Right. So he like, basically the idea here is that the three kingdoms are each controlled by, by a di- like fear, but in a different way. Mm-hmm. Right. So the mouse kingdom is like, like they fear anything that's changed or different. Uh, the human world is in, in constant fear because there's no one to protect them. And the rat world is in fear because that's how the leader crypt keeper, like rat man uses the, yeah. uh, uses his power to, to control others through fear. Uh, so here Jespero is captured and he winds up in the Colosseum and fights like best he can with the cat. But then another rat jumps in to fight with him when he sees the way Despero fights. And the leader, the leader, angry rat man, creepy looking rat man is first like he's really upset that despero was saved and he was saved by a rat named roscuro and roscuro goes but the whole point of this was to have a show right to show your power we put on a great show and and despero saved and people the people were entertained and the mouse can live for another day and another show so the the evil rat man is like satisfied yeah so roscuro was like well, well come live with me so he takes the mouse he's intrigued by the mouse because he's like i haven't heard anyone talk about the code in a long time and Roscuro is a lot older than Despero, and he's like talking about a world that Despero's never heard of, where there were like rats and mice and people who held up this code. And he seems to remember something from long ago, but he's like, it was just a legend from a place I used to come from. And Despero is like, well, I want to know more about this. And he tells Roscuro that he's on a quest charged to him by a princess to save a cursed king. Mm-hmm. And Roscuro is like, oh, the king is not cursed at all. He's depressed because his wife passed away and he gives his whole backstory, mm-hmm. right? About how he and Despero is like, well, that's fine. If we, if you apologize, then the, then the King's curse will be broken. And, and Roscoe is like, that's not a bad idea actually. And so they go back, um, uh, they go back and they try to like talk about, um, Basically, like the what happened is, Roscuro, um, the king like shut down after the queen died. Like basically became depressed, and the princess, not knowing what to do, was like, "I'm so young." So she like blamed the rats and soup, hoping that would like fix problems, right? Yeah, and and would like bring her father back. But of course, she had no idea. She was basically just like, "I'm angry at rats for this happening." Um, mm-hmm. So the two of them then attempt, like they go to the the princess, and Roscuro tries to apologize, but basically the same thing. She's like prejudiced and fearful and tries to have him removed and his heart breaks. Like he's like, I just wanted to apologize and my, and his heart breaks. And in, in vengeance, Roscoe says like the code is dead. Like I can't, I can't belong to this code. It doesn't do anything. It, it, you know, the code is dead. And so Roscoe and Despero actually wind up in a sword fight between each other where Despero is like, you can't like, you can't give up on the code. And Roscoe is like, there mm-hmm. is no code. The code is dead. And they have this awesome sword fight. But of course, Roscuro is much older and like was it was a, it it hints that he was a knight before whatever he came from mm-hmm. and he winds up defeating uh despero and he drops him down one of those um you remember at the beginning there was like those smelly those pipes all over the castle that had like the soup come out of it the smell yep. of the soup he drops despero down one of those tubes and then leaves okay so Roscuro goes back to the rats and begins to rally them. He says, we can have a better life. Instead of living in fear, we can take things into our own hands. We can take back. We, we don't have to hide in the darkness. We're going to capture the princess and make her pay for what she did to us. And so mm-hmm. they go off to go do that. And, of course, the evil rat man is like, but all my power. And Because Roscuro was like, hope hope is what will give us the strength, not fear. Like you, I can give us hope. I can make things better. And they all start to believe in him. And the evil rat man is like... Oh, my power was lost simply because this one dude was like, I can make it better. Because he was thriving. The evil rat man was thriving off of this new, like, world of fear where everyone feared rats. And so that's yeah. how he made his got his power. Despero wakes up. And it turns out that the, the smelly tube pipe had led down to the kitchen. 
So Despero is slightly injured from the fight and from the slide down. And here the chef cares for him and like gives him a, like a little cute like tourniquet and whatnot. Not a mm-hmm. tourniquet. What is it called? Like the the little sling gives him a, a little, sling and whatnot. Yeah, and a little cast, a little cast and whatnot. And then uh, and the chef is like, "Yo, it looks like you've had like quite a story to tell." And he explains like, you know, my friend like this is what's happening. And my friend Roscuro, he's lost his his way. He's lost. He he's forgotten the the code but i can't give up on him because we never give up on friends and even though he's given up on the code i can remind him and and i will show him what the right way is so the chef is like yeah man we always got to do what's right and even though it's illegal you have to do what the right thing is and i know what'll give you the strength to be able to finish your quest and that's good food everyone soup. everyone does things better on good food so he decides he's gonna make soup and he starts making soup yes. and despero eats the soup and he's like damn that's some good soup and so now he feels energized <laughs> he's like he's like wow like, like i i always had the code and the code was great the code gave me meaning but like i needed energy as well and so this good food really you know gets him going he's like now i can keep going um soup makes the world go round. no it doesn't but <laughs> Meanwhile, Roscuro the rat and the rats are capture the princess, um, and they do this like basically like by having swarms of them like run up into her room. I just think that would be really neat to animate. They're preparing to bring her to the Colosseum, like they're dragging her in on her back, and she's all chained up. And Despero appears, and he begins fighting in the arena, like knocking rats off the princess, and like like they're fighting on top of her and like all over the place. And <laughs> Roscuro sees his old friend fighting the rats, and he realizes like he's like. This is what chivalry is. I've done the wrong thing because I was heartbroken. And so he jumps down and he starts fighting alongside the rats. And uh, meanwhile, outside, the soup sm- comes out smelling part of the pipes, like the smelly pipes, the soup smell. And people start to feel good again. And then the light starts to like break. Right. There's a reason for that. <laughs> like the, Okay. The, so. Um, the whole thing can happen with the cat where the cat gets released, but then they like the evil rat man gets caught in the cage with the cat and that whole thing can happen. So after the fight is all over, Roscuro turns to Despero and he says like, I'm sorry for what I did Despero. Like, and Despero was like, you lost the light, but you know, I forgive you. That's what we do. That's what the code is. You know, you at the, in the end when it mattered, you changed, had a change of heart and you came back and you fought with us. So I forgive you. And the princess sees this happen and she's humbled, and she apologizes to Roscuro, A, for how she treated him originally, like, or, like, for not listening to him when he tried to apologize, and then he also tries to apologize, and then she also apologizes to all the rats for what she did, right? So when mm-hmm. they, so then they're all like, well, what will we do now? Like, you know, we, we've built this whole life here, like, how can we fix this? And she's like, well, everyone can eat soup, of course. <laughs> So one of the small pipes that's filtering out through the, through the soup smell winds up going into the room where the king is, and he smells it. And for the first time, he puts down his loot, and he goes down to the kitchen to eat some soup. And he's eating some soup by himself that the chef gives him, and he starts to feel better. And right then, the princess, Roscuro, Despero, and all the rats enter, and they're about to eat some soup when they all see the king, and they stop. And the king bows to his daughter and apologizes for her for how he's been acting mm-hmm. because he was heartbroken. And the whole kingdom eats soup, and they feel better. And they're all eating their soup. And Despero seems a bit down. And when Roscaro asks him, he's like, what's wrong? Isn't, aren't you glad everything worked out and the soup is bitching? And the king, <laughs> you know, and Despero is like, yeah, yeah, everything's great. Except the king wasn't really cursed. I didn't accomplish anything. You know, the quest that I had given, it had all been the soup. And the chef agrees. Like, he's like, yes, soup fixes everything. <laughs> and the princess is like, no, uh, you know they all feel better because they're hungry that's great like good food is great but the king was not cursed in the magical way the way despero had thought but he was under a kind of spell of sadness that was hurt and this spell had affected other people by the way he treated them he he treated the princess poorly by neglecting her she treated the rats and subjects poorly by by like her decrees uh and and the servants which in turn affected the way the rats were forced to live which affected the way the mice were forced to live and it was only when despero was willing to forgive that she understood what she had done wrong and so it was like his willingness to forgive that broke the curse yeah and so like that's why like it has to be when despero forgives roscuro that the clouds start to part and it's not like a real curse it's just like the curse of of melancholia or um depression yeah and and hurt and and forgiveness and yeah so the whole thing is basically built on like 
like why fear and separatism and um isolationism like are bad and forgiveness is key and that's the whole yeah. story of Despero. I didn't really want to change that much. I just th- I thought the story was great. I just I hated that it was out of order. I was like, why are we getting Roscuro's backstory first? We should be introduced to our main character right off the bat and get Roscuro's backstory when it becomes relevant. Yeah. That makes a lot well, and you made it so that it wasn't relevant right off the start. It doesn't need to be. We just know that yeah. there's a thing going on and then we 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 need to be introduced to like our main character and why he that person's important whether they're male or female because i think that could work in my story too um and then uh and then have them introduce i also thought the idea of like roscuro knowing the code and like and like would give them a chance to bond like i thought roscuro and despero our two main characters spend very little time together in the original movie Whereas I yes. think I think if we make them friends and be like, oh, Despero's like, here's a person who knows the code, who has lived the code and could be my mentor, but then have that mentor fall and then have Despero like still be the main character. But mm-hmm. yeah. And uh, I like that both of us changed it so that it's not the soup that makes everything better. <laughs> yeah, I think I like soup, but soup can't be the thing that makes the world go around. It's just dumb. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Soup makes my world go around, but not the real world. <laughs> I'm glad you understand that like you have a a good distinction between like, hey, uh, I love soup, but that doesn't mean everyone loves soup. Like I like soup too, yep. but um like you I, I don't know, you can't have your entire unless it's magic soup. Magic soup. I'd be okay with magic soup. Like if they like went out of their way to be like magic soup. But what I think what makes Despero work so great is that there are fantastical elements, but there's not necessarily like quote unquote magic in the fantastical sense. Yes. Like they're talking animals for sure, and it's clearly like European <laughs> influence, so it already invokes that kind of or evokes, sorry, that kind of uh like fantastical setting. Yeah. But I mean maybe the soup is magic in their world. Maybe. I mean there is like the magic vegetable man yeah so that does mean maybe maybe his soup because he's a magic vegetable man when he cooks soup he makes it magic maybe maybe that's what it was maybe i would like to know more about this magical vegetable golem and how that i think that operates he's like some kind of homunculus golem vegetable man oh my god i'm gonna you know i'm gonna write a third pitch later and i'm it's just gonna be about the vegetable man and how he should be the main character okay? okay if you write that pitch we'll do it as like a narrative short story and we'll just post yes. it. That'll be so cool. Let's do it. I want to okay. do that on the channel anyway. So, all right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any last minute thoughts about Despero? Tale of Despero. Not, not really. I, uh, you know, I liked it. It was good, and uh, I think that it could have definitely used a little extra something, but it was good. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't hate this. I. It wasn't the most amazing thing, but like. I would recommend it. I'd be like, yeah, watch it. It's good. It was fun. I liked it. I enjoyed it. It just, it could have been better. Yep. Yep. Where can people find you? Yep. Uh, you can find me on twitch.tv slash Alyssa Lou, A-L-Y-S-S-A-L-O-O-O, um, or on Instagram, uh, Alyssa Rose Handmade. Um, and I also play bass guitar with an awesome band. Yeah, you can find our band Robot Philosopher on anywhere that you listen to awesome music. You can also find our socials on Instagram and Facebook, which are both run by Alyssa. And you can find awesome episodes of Cinemasters every Tuesday and new episodes of This Is A Thing every other Thursday, as well as bonus casts of things that we have talked about that I think you might find interesting right here on Cinemasters Ultimate Timeline. We'll catch you next time. Goodbye. (laughs) 